Welcome back to E Rodic the brand. Hi, my name is Eden Middleman. I'm your favorite dating and sex coach here. And today, if you're watching me on YouTube for my podcasters, yes, I do have a YouTube channel. I'm in a new little corner location. You might have seen a bit of this in my older videos, but I decided to finally do what some of you guys have been requesting, which is just an open conversation style podcast where it's a little bit more casual. We talk about more than one topic instead of it being super like concise and me yelling at you. We're going to try and have like a conversation where I'll yell at you at certain moments, but not the whole time. (laughs) And for those listening to the podcast, I mean, you just get my voice. It's a little raspy. I had a bit of a week last week. Um, And I don't know if you guys care about life updates. I don't know if I want to share. So like we both have to sleep on it and mull it over. Okay, so just get back to me on that. Thank you. A few updates about the channel about me. I do do one on one dating and sex coaching for those that are interested on Zoom. That can be found on my website. Links will be in the description. And I also have a cameo. So if you're not comfortable with Zoom and you want a personalized video, you have a scenario, you want to keep it, you want to hear me yell at you something like that, more tailored to you, more personal, and you want advice, then Cameo is the way to go. Also makes a great gift, great gift for some of those people in your life that absolutely need me in their life, okay? (laughs) I've been seeing a lot of TikTok content, a lot of YouTubers, and like, I don't know, it's popping on my discovery page, for you page, whatever the fuck it's called. And as you guys know, I'm not like a big consumer of content. I really try and put myself maybe this isn't the best method but I put myself in a box I take a few concepts from what I see is trending Um, I get like trend reports and stuff like that and I'm just like okay how do I feel about this topic can I speak about it organically can I relate to it do I even have a right to speak on it and what I mean by that is you guys know I don't speak on anything that I have not personally had experience with that I have not somewhat overcome like if it's an issue about anxiety I'm not gonna speak about anxiety if I have not done my work I believe that that should be legal like don't speak on something you can't speak on motherfucker like did your mom not teach you that I don't understand today I'm gonna be talking about a topic that I've been wanting to speak on for so long even in my early YouTube days before this channel existed but I was always hesitant on it because I was still battling and struggling with this general topic it's been trending and it's just been really thrown in my face and a lot of you guys have been asking for my opinion on this whole how to become sort of irreplaceable black cat energy confidence self-esteem how to be magnetic how to like cultivate this amazing energy how to become more attractive just like this blender of you know essentially confidence building self-esteem fucking building tips and advice like that's just what it is and I'm going to break down a few of those concepts for you and I'm going to explain to you how I've mastered them to a certain degree, both in my relationships, in my friendships, and in life in general, and how it has actually provided me so much peace. These are not going to be perhaps the conventional way of talking about these topics. I mean, obviously, why'd you come here? Like, you know what to expect. It's not going to be conventional for shit. It's not going to be conventional for shit. I don't believe in like mumbo jumbo, like, okay, this is what you have to do. And like, all these girls are trying to make it tangible and being like, listen more, um, eye contact, body language, like that shit's important. But I'm sorry if your body language and eye contact and like your listening skills are on fucking point. I was going to say on fleek, like I'm just aging myself here. And I don't even know what to call it. If your internal energy, if your self-confidence, if your self-esteem or your self-worth, if you even believe that you are worthy of self-worth within yourself, which is, wow, kind of a complex situation we have going on there. We'll break it down soon. But if that's not on, on point, then I'm sorry, honey. No amount of eye contact, no amount of fucking the gym life, uh, muscle building is going to fucking help you. Nothing is going to help you. Okay. These are all add-ons. I want you to think of like your brain, your mental as like the ice cream flavor in and of itself. Okay. Like that's what you have the most of in that fucking cone. Okay. Or cup because I prefer cup. I don't like sweets, but let's just talk about this because I feel like a lot of you guys like sweets. Is that rude of me to say? <laughs> I'm not insinuating anything. I just feel like more people like sweets than I do. I, I'm a salty girl, as you can tell. <laughs> so let's say you have like a little cup. It's filled with like a swirl of ice cream. And that's just the entire like package. That's the flavor. If the ice cream shit, no amount of topping is going to really like hide that nasty, gnarly taste. 
toppings are like what can make it a more fun experience, can make it yummier, can make it grosser, but they're not going to change the essence of the flavor. You understand? Your toppings are body language, communication skills, which I think are very important. These really add to things, really emphasize the negative parts of you, or they can really emphasize the positive parts of you. It's essentially like an accessories on a woman's body. You know, they can really make her outfit more elevated, or they can really just bring out the fact that her outfit is plain Jane, motherfucking boring, ugly, gross. Okay. The essence of who you are, your personality, your morals and values, how much you've worked on yourself, your self-confidence, your self-esteem is what's going to be what stands out, what is memorable, what makes you black cat energy, sexy, seductive, mysterious, irreplaceable, unforgettable. You know, the person that people break necks for in the fucking room. You might not be objectively beautiful, but there's something about you that stands out. There's something about you that makes you shine fucking bright in that room. Now, physical attraction is a huge add on and it is very important. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's not important. As human beings, we are attracted to beauty. Okay. The world has beautiful things for a reason. Why are flowers like that? Why are fruits different colors? Why, you know, like there's beauty to life. There's a reason for that. We can even go so far as to say that men and women have to be attracted to each other because we're mating. Certain studies have shown, certain research have shown that certain parts of a woman's body shows how healthy and how fertile she might be. Wider hips, greater for giving birth. That's why guys lean towards a more curvaceous body sometimes. Whatever the case may be, that's not to say that that's the only good looking thing about a woman's body, because even if I wanted to be curvy, I I can't like it's just not in my makeup. It's just not who I am. And I'm okay with that, you know, but see, a part of that is owning the beauty that you have. There's a lid to every pot. I say this all the time. There is a flavor for each person. You know what I'm saying? Back to the ice cream. I fucking hate chocolate. I'm okay with vanilla, but give me a sorbet, baby, a little lemon sorbet, a little raspberry. I will devour it. And I'm not a sweet person. You understand? How do you become irreplaceable? I'm going to tell you something that is totally not probably what you expect. Drop people. A lot of you guys carry other people's personalities, morals, values, influences. And like I'm a Scorpio, motherfuckers. I'm loyal to a fault. So I get this. And that's why it's been extremely important in my life, being also very empathetic, to not have people in my life for energy vampires who suck the living fucking life out of me. And not in a good way, right? They're not sucking on a titty. They're sucking everything I've worked so hard for. And my whole life, I've, I've definitely been quite insecure. And that was never a secret. My mom would always bring it up too. She'd be like, you know, sit, sit up tall, chin up, like shoulders back. I'm like, mom, I'm a basketball player. I, you know, like I'm hunched over half the time. But I was always very insecure. I always thought I was ugly. And I look back at pictures. I'm like, God damn it. You were so fucking hot. You were such an idiot. What I would have done with that motherfucking face and that body, where I would have been if I was more confident, do not end up in that position. And I'm sure some of you already have, and that's okay. It's not like you can't change that. The beauty of life is that it's quite malleable. I don't know if you've noticed that. One day you like the color pink when you're seven years old, and then when you're 10 years old, you're about the green. You know? How the fuck did that happen? How the fuck did that happen? Were you sitting there active? No, it just happened. You just suddenly didn't like the color pink anymore. You grew out of it. Just like you grow out of people. I don't care if they're family, friends that you've known for 10 hundred years. If they do not align with your morals and values, drop them. Here's the thing. When you carry people that do not vibe with you, you don't know who you are. You confuse yourself. And this is usually the biggest battle with who am I? And, you know, what do I stand for? And how to be attractive and how not to put up with bullshit and what your boundaries are. A lot of you guys message me, what is a boundary? What are my non-negotiables? I'm like, Becky, I don't know what your non-negotiables are, ma'am. I don't even know. I don't even know what you look like. I don't don't even know where you come from. All right. How the fuck am I supposed to give you that? It's something that's so personal and so tailored to you. So my non-negotiables and my standards and what I believe in, they they don't just come out of my fucking ass, all right? I had to cultivate them. I had to grow with them. I had to test them. I had to learn, sometimes the hard way. And you guys complain about the dating world and about meeting people and yeah, it fucking sucks. Okay, I hate the small talk too. Do you guys think I have patience for that shit? Like, look at me. Like, I'm the least patient person when it comes to bullshit. And I'll talk about how I become this way and how other people can just sense it in the room and won't even bother me if they don't have something good to offer in terms of conversation, energy, whatever the fuck it might be. Now I have this automatic filtration process that just happens with with me just being there. 
I don't have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to teach anyone anything. Nobody wastes my goddamn time. And I'll tell you something. My life is so goddamn peaceful now. How did I do that? I sat with myself and I said, what the fuck don't I like? If I don't know what I like, what don't I like? Okay. What don't I want for myself? What didn't make me happy? What didn't work out? Why, you know, what is a common pattern here? Why am I the common denominator to every shitty guy in the world? Maybe I'm the problem. And this is what I've always said to you guys. Look at patterns. The common denominator. You can't be blaming the world and sitting and sitting on your ass. What was me and crying without it being partially your fault, your problem. Okay. Now my control freaks and my anxiety ridden people. I get you. I know you're freaking out right now and, ha and you're having like a, a fucking full blown panic attack. All right. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. All right. Deep breath, square breathing, you know, touch a titty, grab a ball, put, put a sour candy in your mouth, do something that you got to do. Just get your mind off of it for a second. There's only so much that you can control, but I'll tell you what you hundred percent can control. It's you, your reactions, your thoughts, your feelings, your decisions, your friends are your decisions. Your relationship was your decision. Okay, unless there was a gun to your head, don't give me no excuse. It was your decision. Where you live is your decision. Where you, what you do is your decision. The money you make, your decision. No, it's my salary. No, it's this. What requires you to get a salary increase? Are you doing that? Not everything's going to happen overnight though. So don't get it twisted. I know I make it sound black and white. I know I make it seem like I'm one of those spiritual motherfuckers out here who tell you to shove a crystal up your ass and, you know, burn a piece of paper and uh, put it under your pillow. And then tomorrow, you know, all is well in the world. I've tried that, by the way. <laughs> doesn't work. It doesn't work. I, I've had moments of desperation in my life. And let me tell you, that's the, don't resort to that. Okay. That again is just adding to your desperation, how you act in terms of desperation. You are basically telling yourself and the world that you are lacking. So you're being desperate. That's why you gravitate towards shitty people. That's why you run back to your ex. That's why you text him or her in moments of sadness or weakness or when you're drunk. Cause you're a fucking pussy ass bitch. Number one, ew. And number two, you're tacky. Number three, you are lacking. You can't provide yourself with whatever it is that you're reaching out to grab. And when you keep doing that, you're only going to get more of that. So where are you at fault? What are you to blame? Be hypercritical and take accountability. The minute you do, you'll understand there's more power to you on this planet than there ever was before. And so I spent my whole life essentially being super depressed, super anxious, like clinical, like doctors, all right? Doctors, motherfuckers wanted to lock me up. Like I was not well, okay? I stopped eating. I was unhealthy as fuck mentally, emotionally, damaging myself, taking it out on myself, self-harming. It's night and day from the girl I was versus the girl that I am today. My story gets quite dark and I don't like to share it because I'm not out here saying, oh, wow, look at me. Oh, victim. And like, look what I've done with myself. And oh my God, and you can do it too. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. All right. I don't have an ebook. Okay. Maybe I fucking should, but I don't got a fucking ebook. Imagine like a few years from now, I have an ebook. Like how embarrassing. I mean, you know, a girl's got to get some coin, right? Like I, I'd be doing this for like charity, but now come on. It won't be a, a free PDF. Let me just tell you that. It won't be a free PDF. <laughs> there was a self-worth cap to me internally. And this is only what I realized after the fact. D did I really believe that I was worth anything that I wanted? The answer is no. Now, in the moment, you won't be able to answer that. I had uh, an interesting employer <laughs> a few years back who sat me down and said, how much money do you want? And I said, can I get a million? Ha ha ha. And he was like, why are you laughing? And he was like, well, no, how much money do you think you're worth? Do you think you can get? Okay. Now he wasn't talking about me. Okay. There was no trafficking of any sort here. All right. Let's just clear that up. I know you're thinking it, but it, it wasn't that. And I was like, I don't know, I guess like a hundred thousand. And he was just like, you don't seem confident in that. What do you think is realistic? And he wasn't giving me anything back. And I said, I, okay, um, 80 He's like, are you sure about that? I'm like, yeah, like I, uh, yeah, 80, 75, you know, like, I think that's good. And he's like, see, here's the thing. You don't believe that you're worth a million dollars. So I would never pay you a million dollars. You didn't even believe you were worth a hundred thousand dollars. So I was not going to pay you a hundred thousand dollars. You barely believe that you're worth $80,000 or your skills or what you have to offer. So I'm not going to pay you 80 and I'm not going to pay you 75. Did I shoot myself in the foot or what? And this was such a mind-blowing experience that I had. He's like, you see, we have a self-worth ceiling, a cap. We don't actually believe the things that we want. 
we don't believe that we can have them. We don't believe that we deserve them. And that's something that you need to explore. It's just so complicated because a lot of people carry a lot of baggage and a lot of trauma and all these things. And how can you heal from something that you yourself can't digest? How can you heal from anxiety when you think it's just a chemical imbalance in your brain and this is, you know, you're fucked. This is just what it is. Eat shit. You hate yourself. You hate the world. Right. And, and that just becomes this chip on your shoulder and you start to get more and more tainted as time goes on. And you start to believe that this is all that life is really about and that this is all that you're worth. And then you start taking that out on anybody else around you. Or there are people that don't even last a minute with you because you're not a great person to be around. You're negative. You're sad. You're needy. You're anxious. It's uncomfortable to be with somebody like that. Okay. Nobody's going to fall in love with a, with a problem ridden person. And that doesn't mean that you're, it's hopeless. Okay. Don't sit there and be like, Oh, well, no one's going to love me. Shut the fuck up. All right. Stop being fucking dramatic. You know, I used to sit there on my bathroom floor and cry about that bullshit. Oh, nobody's going to love me. Nobody's going to love me. Oh my God. And then guess what? You're still crying an hour later. Did that help? Did anything change in the world? Did Prince Charming come like in the movie and say, I will love you with your problems. I will help you. Like, I'll save you. Like, who the fuck does that? We all are carrying so much. Who the fuck wants more? No one. You don't want more. And if you crave problems, it's because it provides you with something that feels familiar that might be comfortable because it is familiar. Some of that bullshit. You got to unpack in therapy and I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm talking some sense into you because there's way too much content out there. There's way too many people out there that are selling on, you know, be this, be that. You want to be black cat. You want to be irreplaceable. You want to be sexy. You want to have, you know, guys and girls being golden retrievers around you and like kissing your ass. Like, I'm sorry. You can do all the things that these people are telling you, but it's not going to ever fucking stick, click or work if you yourself are not putting in the fucking work for yourself right? You want everyone to work for you, but you can't even do work for yourself. You work for an employer, but you don't work for your goddamn self. The person that is going to be the only thing that wakes up with you every morning and goes to bed with you every night until you fucking die. I don't care what ring you have on your finger. I don't care who your man is. I don't care who your parents are. I don't care who the fuck your friends are. Everyone's going to look out for their own goddamn ass. And that's not a bad thing. Stay in your lane and take care of yourself. And then you'll see that other people will feel like they need to take care of you because you're doing that. Monkey see, monkey do, all right? The most basic thing. Monkey see, monkey do. Your motherfucking monkey do as you wish to receive to others and to you. That's a Bible verse somewhere, right? I just realized the common sense in all of this and all of life's bullshit, right? It likes to take you for tosses and turns, but it's really not that complicated. You love to complicate it. You love to complicate it. It needs to be complicated for the world to make money off of you. It needs to be complicated for you to believe in those romance movies you go and spend money on and watch on Netflix. It needs to be what you guys gossip about with your friends because you've got nothing else to talk about. I get it. I get it. So what patterns can you find here? What is the common denominator to you? Take accountability and start to make action, okay? I'd invest more money into therapy than I would in any other fucking practice, wellness practice. You guys with your gua sha and your asshole and your cellulite creams and your whatever the fuck, fix your shit and watch how the rest of your body is going to start taking care of itself, all right? The gut and the mind, the mind and the gut. Educate yourself, okay? Take care of yourself. Number one, you go to the gym, go to the mental gym. That's called a therapist's office. Thank you very much. Or come to me for dating and sex advice for something that's a little bit less deep than that because I know where I'm qualified and where I'm not. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you like everybody else on the internet. Okay. Now, once I kind of got all of that settled and I went to therapy and I really like I, I cried for help and it was painful in a European household. My mom was great, but there was no way my dad was gonna find out that I was going to therapy. You know what I mean? Like there was no way. You know, and as I've gotten older, I've always questioned, do I really believe that I'm worth it? Why don't I believe that I'm worth it? And the truth is, is you can sit there and tell yourself you're worth it, you're worth it, you're worth it. But if you're not doing anything about it, if you're not adding value to yourself or to your life, if you're not showing yourself that you're capable of being good at something or accomplishing something, you're never going to be confident. So how do you get to confidence? It's very simple. Take action. Show yourself that you can go to the gym every morning at 7 a.m., Okay, get off your lazy ass and make it to the gym. I don't care if you want to or don't. The goal here is to get fit. The goal here is to be healthy. 
So there's going to be certain things that you don't want to do that are uncomfortable that you're going to need to do, motherfuckers. You don't want to go to therapy? You're going to need to. You don't want to exercise? You're going to need to. You don't want to listen to me? You're going to need to. (laughs) Okay. And I started to tell myself, okay, what can I do right now? And what can I do tomorrow? And what can I do this year? And I wrote a list and I told myself, how am I going to get there? And I wrote exact steps and I didn't overwhelm myself. I was not going to do a list like I did every year of all the things I wanted to accomplish and have a $24 million home because 24 is my lucky number and then, and and whatever. And then at the end of the year, reevaluate, add it again to the same list and it, and it just go nowhere. I want actionable steps, tangible things I can do to see actual results, no matter how big or small I want to be going in the right direction. I just want to show myself that I can go to the right direction. So let me tell you, when I wake up every morning and go to my fucking hot yoga slash fitness classes that fucking kick my ass, all right, kick my ass in half, make me fucking shake all night because my body's in fucking pain, I still wake up the next morning and go. I don't think about it. I'm not an early bird. I'm not a morning person. Do not fucking talk to me. My alarm clock goes off and I get the fuck out of bed and I have my bag packed from the night before. I don't think about nothing in the morning. I make my coffee and I get the fuck out of the house. That's it. I get in the car, once I'm behind the wheel, I know where I got to go. That's it. I get there. I got to get into the class. I take small steps and every step I take, my confidence grows. Now I'm addicted to it because when you build a habit, your body automatically craves it. Just do it for a few weeks and you're going to want to continue doing it or you're going to feel like it's missing if you stop doing it. Now, the thing is, is be careful not to fall off because when you fall off, it's harder to get back on. So the whole thing is, is you got to be on top of your game. People think that's so exhausting. I just want to chill. I just want to sit in my bed and watch Netflix. There's times to do that. A lot of times for that. I do what my mom did to me, honestly. Okay, you come home from, work, from school. You're going to wash your hands. You're going to sit and do homework. And then once you're done your homework, you can chill. And then we can have dinner. And I was always anxious to finish my homework because I wanted to chill. I was rewarded for doing something that was benefiting me in the long term. And I became a 95 average student, a 95% average student because I was disciplined. I was so disciplined. I was disciplined in homework. I was a competitive dancer. I was a track star. She's a runner. She's a track star. (laughs) I wasn't a track star. I just needed to say that. I did track. I did basketball. I did all of these things while maintaining a 95% average in in school. And yeah, I will fucking brag about that because it took me blood, sweat, and tears. But it paid off right? It paid off being one of the first in my family to get a diploma was huge. And I did it. I could have given up. I wanted to give up. I had crippling anxiety, guys. You know, I I was sick and I still did it. That's not to say that everybody's going to match that or it's going to be the same. My brother, different story. God bless him. He couldn't get a 95 average, even if he tried. (laughs) just didn't interest him. He was excelling in in competitive soccer. He was excelling in so many other things. He's great at math. I suck at math. Like you win some, you lose some, you know what I mean? But it was this do something and then you reap the reward of it that my mom kind of taught us, right? Do something that you might not love, but you'll love the end result, right? So that's where I built my confidence is showing and proving to myself that yes, I can do it. There are moments where I'm like, oh God, like when I was younger, my dad used to like I don't know, fix my tire or, you know, do this or check the car. And now I'm a big girl and I'd be doing that on my own. You know, if my, if my man is out of town or can't do it, I'm doing that on my own. I feel confident. And that goes to show that I depend on no one. So the reason why you feel independent and a badass bitch and black cat and irreplaceable and magnetic is because you don't need anybody. You choose who you want. And even if you don't get them, you're okay. That type of energy is something that everybody wants to be around, especially men, because it's, it shows them some form of challenge, that they have to be a better person around you, right? That they have to earn something to a certain degree. They'll never flat out say it, right? If they can fuck you on the first night, they will. But then after the fact, they'll be like, oh, does she do that with everyone? And do you do that with everyone, Stacy? <laughs> just, just asking for a friend. And it's not me being judgmental because you know, I have fucked guys a little bit earlier than maybe I should have, but I knew I didn't want to be with them. You understand? So I was doing what I wanted to in that moment to get to that independence where you truly can care for yourself, stand on your own two feet. You can feed yourself. You can fill your own cup. That's where that confidence comes from. That's where that sexiness comes from. That's where that magnetic comes from. Not from none of the bullshit of learn when to speak and learn how to put, you know, put your chin up and learn how to show right amount of skin and not that 
yes, those are all very micro things and very important, okay? And if you're being provocative and showing too much, obviously you look like a hoe. People make judgments. You judge people like that, so what makes you think that other people are not going to judge you on that? It's that simple, right? I told you guys my turtleneck trick. I go on, My first dates are always with a turtleneck, and I'd be wearing that turtleneck fucking until this very day, okay? I have a man who has seen everything he needs to see. We live together, all that stuff, turtleneck gang all the fucking way. You know, I'll still leave shit to his imagination, even though he has seen everything. It's still keeps our relationship alive and and it makes him still feel like he wants to work on things you know he has become a better man and I'm so I'm so sorry to say this my my man my man he wasn't a boyfriend kind of guy before me he wasn't a boyfriend kind of guy okay and I'm Maybe, you know, he got to the age where he was like over shit and he wanted to settle down. Perhaps I'm sure that definitely influenced it. But he wasn't a relationship kind of man before. Around me, he couldn't be a player, a fuck boy. He couldn't do it. Okay, I'm not saying he was because I don't know who he was before me. But I definitely do know that he was not a relationship kind of man. And so why? Why me? I've seen some of the people in the past. They're objectively better looking than me. You could say that. It was my energy and my independence. I was not clingy. I didn't care if he was going to stick around or not. I was going to do my thing. I was going to invest in myself. I was going to pour into myself. And if he fit the picture, great. And if he did not, then he did not. And I was very open and honest at the very beginning about what my non-negotiables are. And I told him, no hard feelings if that doesn't work out for you. Because I, I got I to gotta look out for me. In a kind, nice way. This does not mean bitchy. Just because you can hold your own doesn't mean that you should walk around like your shit doesn't stink. Because, motherfucker, you're not the only person that can hold their own. Okay? So there's a humbleness, a beauty to being humble, but also knowing that you've got yourself. And that this shit doesn't impress you much. You know, because you'd be doing this for yourself. You can take care of yourself. All these girls want princess treatment, all this shit. But you guys are missing the fucking point. To get princess treatment, you need to be able to give yourself princess treatment. So that you don't fall for stupid shit that's not princess treatment. You guys are stupid. Okay, he got he got you flowers once, once. And oh my God, he is so sweet. You're dumb. Go get yourself flowers every week. Okay, then tell me if a man getting you flowers once in a while makes you wet. You know what I mean? It's to the level in which you take care of yourself, to the level in which you believe you deserve and therefore you give yourself what you deserve. You invest in, in yourself with time. Time, discipline, and energy. Going to the gym every morning is you investing time, discipline, until you fucking make it a habit. Why are you doing that? Because you believe that you're worthy of it. Because you want it. Because you know it's good for you. And you want to do stuff that are good for you. And therefore, that makes you confident when you show yourself and you show up for yourself and you say, I can do it. And I'm doing it because I believe in my worth. And with action, you solidify that. Because you could sit there and talk all you want, that, 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 but if you don't solidify it, if your actions don't align with your words, right? Because actions speak louder than words. If they don't align, then it is nothing. It is a thought, okay? It is just floating. Yes, it's a powerful thought. Uh huh. Do something about it. Do what you can about it. And there's a lot of things you can do for yourself. Actually, you can do so much for yourself. You can't do much about the world, you can't do much about the politics here. You can't do much about Johnny, you know, across the street being a dick. You can't do anything about it. You can only do what you can do for you. And it's so funny how we've been programmed to do shit for ourselves, for our lives, and we still get it twisted. We're out here doing shit for other people. It's not to say you shouldn't, but to people that don't deserve it, to people that treat you like shit, to people you settle for. Because you think that that's all that you're worth. Now, okay, I'm not going to get into me, me being all preachy, although I know you guys fucking love it. Um, I'm not going to get all preachy. Another big thing I want to highlight here about getting to that magnetic energy, being that person in that room. Listen, I'm going to throw this word out. And again, not a conventional thought that matches this topic, but tolerance. This is my, my everything my everything. You want to you want to talk about actions speak louder than words. You want to talk about how actions solidify ideas and thoughts and really bring to life your self-confidence, your esteem, your worthiness, respect, independence. Let's talk about tolerance. What do you tolerate? <laughs> And this is where a lot of you guys trip the fuck up. You tolerate 3 a.m. text messages and you wonder why you're a shelf girl, a girl that's never taken seriously, why you're a booty call, why you're the other woman. You know, what do you tolerate? You tolerate forms of disrespect. 
from different people and you give them excuses. I don't care if you're my goddamn family. I don't care if you're my friend that I've known for 10 hundred years. But this is me, guys. I'm a lot of people call me severe, but I have a very, very peaceful life now. Like peaceful. Like there's no drama that comes my way because people know that if they, they even try, I'm just OK, bye. Drop. You're going to come to me with drama. I don't need you in my life. Do me a favor. That's a you problem. Not a me. If I've done something wrong, of course, I'll own up to it. But I don't I don't have that drama of like people coming in, saying this, doing that. Talky, talky, talk, gossip, gossip, gossip. Nothing, nothing. Why? Why? Why do all of my friends around me know somebody who has a fucking crazy story about this, about that? My, maybe my life is boring. I don't know. But I don't tolerate shit. I don't tolerate things just for the plot, bitch. I care way too much about myself, my life, and who I am as a person and how that you know, in turn, it's not just about me. It's about my, my mom, my brother, my man, my dog. I need to be healthy. I need to be happy. I need to be a good person for those people too. I need to be the best version of me. I need to stay hot and fun and exciting for my man, for my relationship. I need to be a good friend for my friends because I love them and I want that for them. And I want that for myself. It's kind of a big web of things, but you guys are out here tolerating bullshit. When you tolerate bullshit, you're saying that this is what, I, what I'm accepting. Therefore, in turn, it shows more about me than it does about whatever is going on out there. If you accept people treating you like shit, they're going to continue to treat you like shit. Even if you sit there and say, stop treating me like shit. Those are words, not actions. I've always told you guys to block. You guys don't block because, again, you want some sort, of, so, some sort of story for the plot. You guys want drama. I, I don't know. I really don't know what you guys are searching for. A headache. A headache and a half. And some of you guys need to get burnt so many fucking times until you guys register that and until you don't want it anymore. So go ahead. You know, that's your life. Who am I to tell you what to do with your life? I'm giving you advice. Take it or leave it. This is what has helped for me. That is how you can stop casual relationships from happening. Casual dating. You don't tolerate that. You don't like that from the get-go. Bye. And you don't have to be a dick about it. All right? And I guess maybe because some of you guys can't think outside the box, I'll teach you how it goes. If I'm man... If you want a man to pay on the first date and he does and decides to go half seas with you and you believe that that's a very platonic like vibe to give and you don't even do that with your friends. So why would you have the man who wants to enter you? Um, I would just be like, OK, I'll pay for the whole thing. Thank you very much. And I would never call him again blocked. I don't owe him an explanation. Tolerance isn't just accepting big displays of disrespect. Tolerance is reacting to things. I don't care if it's positive or negative. It's giving attention. It's feeding energy, good or bad, into something. Fighting with a person who is not listening or who will disrespect you anyways or has done this seven million times. You're wasting time, but you're still showing them that you're tolerating this. When you don't tolerate something, you remove yourself, period. You remove yourself. I don't put up with this. So I'm not going to sit and argue, right? If you're going to raise your voice, I'm getting up and I'm walking away. I'm going to a different room till you cool off. I don't tolerate this. I don't do it to you. I do not tolerate this. I know what I deserve because I would never do that to you. See what I'm saying? That's how it works. When you cultivate that within you, when you know who you are, when you have morals and values that are aligned, when you are working on yourself, when you fucking went to therapy, you can say, I don't tolerate this because you know that you don't deserve this. How do you know you don't deserve this? Because you don't do this. Because you know where your self-worth is, right? You won't even, your body won't, will reject it. There's a group of girls that came into my life recently. Da, 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 drama, 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 gossip, gossip, gossip. No matter, you know, I tried to diffuse the situation no matter what I did. You know, it wasn't enough. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. I'm not playing like that. I want good quality people. I'm okay with less, but having good quality. Less is more to me anyways. Less of a headache anyways. So what did I do? I dropped everybody. And it's not in a rude way. And if they want to talk, I'm happy to talk. But if they're going to cross the line and give me drama or gossip or start saying things, you know, or that this wasn't enough, that wasn't enough, and it, it, they're just energy suckers. You know, I say this now. I'm too old for this. I don't have patience for bullshit. This doesn't feed me. This isn't going to give back to me. I shouldn't have to explain myself. This is my standard. If you can't understand that, I'm not, I, I don't tolerate this. So bye. I don't sit and have a conversation. I don't explain myself. This is what has made me 
pretty attractive, I think, to a lot of people. I've been told that, wow, you seem a little intimidating and scary. There's something sexy about you. You kind of make me a little nervous. You kind of make me like want to act right around you. And that's because they know I don't tolerate it. There is an unspoken subconscious fucking magical beam of energy that hits everyone in the room that I stand in. And they know that I won't tolerate shit. They know that I'll have their back. So everyone wants to be on my good side. Because if you're on my bad side, I mean, you're dropped. And people freak out about that because it is a privilege to be in my life. Because when you're in my life, I treat people in my life like gold. They know they can call me whenever that I'll be there. I'll be the first one there. Right? These are privileges. Now, if you don't see your presence as a privilege, then that's where you're going to have to tolerate shit and settle because you don't really believe that you're... (laughs) You're a privilege, that your energy is a privilege, that, that when you walk into someone's life, what you have to offer is, is a privilege. I bring to the table myself. And if you can't see that as enough, or if you don't know that, or if you don't take the time to get to know what I have to offer, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tolerate someone who needs me to pinpoint who I am. See, that's the problem with this conversation that's also going on fucking TikTok or whatever the fuck else. These wounded little wannabe masculine boys. Need I remind you, I don't care if you've had them in your life for forever. Unconditional love, whatever that means to you, because that is in of itself, I believe, a very flawed concept. We're not going to get into that too much, but unconditional love. You loving somebody, family, a sister, um, a person you've dated for 10 years, um, whatever it might be, a parent. If they wronged you, disrespected you, cheat, lie, scheme, hurt a family, whatever it is, unconditional love doesn't mean unconditional tolerance. There's a big difference. I love people that have hurt me in the past, but I will not tolerate them in my life. And yeah, you can do that. You can love them for who they could have been. You can mourn whatever the fuck you want, but I will not have them in my life. I will not be sitting and dwelling on them. I will not be waiting for them because I got to move forward because I got shit to do because there's things I need to accomplish because I have purpose in my life. Another thing about being, you know, this sexy energy this you know unattainable attractive person is do you have something to work for work towards do you have a a a goal in mind do you have a plan do you have a life that you want to live and again that falls into self-worth your self-worth ceiling do you know the salary that you want to make why can't you say it confidently why do you put it on a fake you know check on your vision board or whatever but you never accomplished it and you never really believe in it because it's a whacked ass number. It's a whacked ass number to you because you don't think that you can provide whatever it is that would get you that kind of money. So all of this comes down to understanding your morals and values, understanding that you need to work for your confidence by doing things that require action, understand where your self-worth is, okay, and what you believe is attainable and what is not and why it is not. Okay, what what the blockage is there and how you can work on that so that you can continue to grow and make it to, you know, another milestone or whatever, whatever your goals are. Do you even have goals and stop tolerating things? If, If this isn't resonating with you, the one thing you can do is figure out what the highest version of you would look like, would be like, would act like. And then in moments of doubt or in moments of am I tolerating something I shouldn't be tolerating or okay, should I answer this text message or what should I do in this situation? I want you to ask yourself what the best version, the highest version of you would do in that moment and only do it if you believe that the highest version of you would do it. That's it. It shouldn't require a lot of thought. It should be yes or no. It should be she would do this or she wouldn't, she wouldn't do this. That's it. I've become the girl that gets away in a lot of people's story. I've become the friend that people mourn when they lose. I've become that person because I give a lot to people because I don't ever believe that I don't have enough to give. Do you see what I'm saying? My cup is always being poured into and therefore it's overflowing and I can give so much to other people because the more I put into me, the more I put out to people. And a part of my happiness is to be able to give people certain things, the best version of me. And when I'm not able to, I actually am so sad about that fact that I can't. I like mourn that. I'm like, how the fuck did you get here? Let's go. Let's get up. Let's, you know, switch gears. Let's do something fresh. And I'm brainstorming on how to get back on my horse and keep at it. I have blinders on because here's the thing. I don't actually care what anyone has to say about me. If I know who I am, I'm pretty solid. If I'm not sure which is where a lot of you guys might be, then 
yeah, it's going to hurt if someone says something. Okay. And I've had close people in my life talk behind my back and say shit. Obviously, I drop them the minute they do. No problem. Like, you you were willing to risk my friendship with you by talking behind my back and thinking I'd never find out. Goes to show how much you actually care about this friendship. Okay? If you have something to say about me or you have a question, you talk to me. People know that that's my law. That's my rule. That's what I live by. And here's the thing. People in my life abide by that, not because I stated it, but because it aligns with their morals and their values. I select wisely. I pick wisely. So if you're in a shitty relationship or a shitty friendship, pick wisely. This has to do with tolerance. Okay? I don't tolerate this. This is the only thing I accept. And I'm not going to sit around and entertain things for the meantime. You guys, again, that shows me that your time isn't valuable. Time is valuable. If you are a privilege to be around, if your presence is a privilege, then your time is a privilege as well because it's an extension of you. It's your presence sitting in a space for a certain amount of time while people are reaping the benefits. If your time isn't valuable to you and you're sitting there and you're casually dating with flings and tings and Benny boy and Jakey and Stacy and Tiffany and, uh, you know, Gertrude, I mean, ew, I, I, you're not attractive anymore. You know, you're not. You know why? Because you're OK with like bottom barrel and you're OK with a bunch of casuals and you have time for a roster. <laughs> You have time for a roster. A roster is a lot of time, motherfuckers. I've had a roster. All right? I know. And I could barely do it because I got a fucking job. All right? Sorry. If he has a roster, he doesn't have a job. And he tells you he doesn't have time for a relationship because he's busy with the roster. Because the roster is priority. Because his time is not that valuable to pour into something that might give back to him. So he pours into somebody that can open her legs. Because he himself is disposable. So he's, he or she is trying to inject this excitement into their life when really they're searching for something far deeper that they're not going to be able to find. That's why cheaters continue to cheat if they don't fix themselves, if they don't heal, if they don't go to therapy, if they don't work on their shit. They don't actually make changes. Okay? They can apologize. They can feel bad. But here's the thing. If you don't switch up your ways, you're going to continue to chase something that you are lacking. A lot of you guys do that. So whether that's in the form of cheating, whether that's in the form of casual dating, you are in lack. That's why you're constantly looking for a bunch of different outlets to th and things to fill you up. Drinking, doing drugs, partying all the time, this and that. I drink, I have my fun, I go out, I party, and I don't hide it. But I do that once in a blue moon and mommy is posting it because it's such a big moment for her because she doesn't do it often. You understand? Because I rather spend the night in reading a book, you know, hang out with my man, doing fun stuff in the bedroom. Like we, we can do fun. We can do fun. We're going out with him. We're going out with a friend and having a deep conversation, you know, like working together, building each other up. I only want those people in my life. I only, I don't have room, time, energy, because my energy and my time is a privilege for me to give. And I've worked so hard for it. Truthfully, that's a lot of times where it comes from. You know, I like to say, oh, yeah, it's a privilege. but It is. I know it is. But bitch, I'm, you, know how, you know how many years I spent in therapy? <laughs> Do you know how much money I spent in therapy? Do you know how much time it took me to pull myself off of the fucking bathroom floor? And going through that battle was enough for me to tell myself that I'm not going to fucking waste my time. That I am not going to go back 10 steps by being around shitty people, by doing shitty shit. I don't care if it's in that moment. I'm like, fuck it. I'm so mad at him. I'm so mad at her. Let's go do stupid shit. You're numbing. You're running away. And let me tell you, that's not cultivating good, sexy energy, irreplaceable energy. It's cultivating tacky, gross, cheesy, white girl, wasted energy that nobody fucking likes, right? And that's the truth. Your daughter one day going to be like that. How are you going to feel? Disgusting. Disgusting. Embarrassing. Why are you embarrassed for your daughter? You're doing that, you know? Now, I'm not saying not to live. I'm not saying not to go have fun, but there's to the limits. So this is part of tolerance. Do you have a limit? And this is not a limit to your salary. This is not a limit to, you know, your dreams and your wishes. This is a limit to certain things. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go out whatever, but there's a limit. At this time, I'm going to go because usually around this time, people get sloppy, drink too much, and then the party is shit. I want to end on a high note. I want to leave on a high note. I'm never the last one to leave a party. Okay. I usually am one of the earlier ones to leave a party. Okay. Because I like to leave on a high note. It also makes me look hot and mysterious. This girl's got places to be. And I got to wake up early in the morning. Right? I've got places to be for real. You guys act like you've got places to be, but you don't actually. So another way of being hot and being independent is, are you busy? Get busy with doing stuff for you, taking care of yourself. That doesn't mean to go get plastic surgery. That doesn't mean to go and get breast implants, ass implants, hair done, makeup done every five minutes, unless that's what you want. Okay. But truthfully, like l less is more. Okay. 
There's so many other things you can be doing for yourself. Make a list. When you're bored or anxious or feel like you're going to text them or you're going to do stupid shit, you have a list to resort to. You got to put little to no thought. You look, you pick something off of that list. You put your finger on it. You say, okay, what do I need to do? How do I need to set this up? How am I going to accomplish this tonight? I make checklists every single day when I wake up. I don't want to have to think and worry and stress all day about when I get home, I have to do this, this, and this. Don't forget to call this. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to change that appointment. Da, 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 da. My life has been pretty hectic the last little while. There's a lot going on in my life. You know, s- some good, some not so good. And I'm like busy doing stuff. And I have a checklist every single day. I'm, I make sure I do like right away earlier on the day. So I'm not dragging it on. The, the later the day gets, the lazier I get. I've noticed that. And that's just me knowing myself. So get to know yourself. There's so many things that you can be doing if you really want to be that hot, sexy, whatever. And this automatically makes people around me want to respect me. Would I spend time with them? They're very intentional. When I come into town, you know, I moved out of Toronto. And when I come to Toronto, a lot of people are like, can I see you? Can I hang out with you? Or when they do, they're like, what do you want to do? Or like, they'll, they'll all come meet me. They'll come to like, they're very intentional because they know that my time is valuable. Okay. It's not, it's not cocky. It's not cocky. I come in there. I get shit done. Okay. I go into the city cause I've got shit to do for myself, not just to see my friends. Okay. Everything is intentional. Everything is specific. Everything is for me. Everything is to make sure I'm doing better, that I'm taking care of myself, that I'm healthy. Okay. My family, I invest in them. I call them. I see them. I go out for lunch with my brother. I connect with them. I ask him questions. I give to my relationships, to things that are important to me. Stop tolerating things that are a waste of your time figure out what is a waste of your time. Increase your own self-worth, right? And this is where people say, you know, what is your value? High value women. It's their self-worth. High value men. It's your self-worth. It's you're independent. You can do all these things for yourself because you believe you're worthy of doing them. That's why you've been doing them. That's why you continue to do them. And if someone comes into to your life in terms of a partner, you want to make sure that they can do that, if not more, match it, if not more, Right? Because you, you can do it. You've been doing it on your own. Prove to yourself that you can do it on your own. And then you're going to start to be more selective. People who have not done that or can't do that haven't survived on their own. This is why I say, like, ladies and gentlemen, live on your own for a minute. Pay your own bills so you know how to do that. It's very important. Like, this is the mother in me. Never be reliant on nobody for nothing. Okay? But if they want to come in and help you in certain areas or contribute in certain areas, that's the word, contribute, because you can do it on your own then okay. Then you're not going to settle for just any Joe Schmo, any Lisa Wisa Kisa. Like you're going to be a little bit more selective, but not in a dick way. You're on a different caliber, right? We've got the bottom barrels, okay? We've got the mediocre mediums. We've got the classy cats, classy black cats, apparently. Like, we've got layers to this shit. Play on your own playing field, and you're going to climb up playing fields the more you build yourself up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It was so fun talking organically. I feel like we went to so many different depths and things. And this topic, although it's like one large one, kind of mini sub ones, trendy ones, just like fuck the trends and shit like that. Like the the truth is you guys just want to know how to be confident, how to take care of yourself and how to build up your self-worth. And therefore that then makes you this, you know, wow, mysterious magnetic person. This is the essence of it. Now, there are little things, micro things, little sprinkles, little toppings that I do add that I've learned that are in my little treasure chest of things um, that I obviously practice on a daily basis because I enjoy it. It makes me feel good. It's benefited me. And I can go into more micro details on how to live your life being that person if you'd like. So just let me know in the comments below on my YouTube channel or send me a DM. If you're listening to the podcast, please, please, please let me know that you guys enjoyed this long form, little chatty, all over the place podcast by giving this podcast five large and in charge stars. Make sure you are following the podcast as well. It means the absolute world to me and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the bell for the notifications. Like it. I did a little opposite like this video. I might divide this video into a few sections. Maybe I'll just do like one large one. Then I'll divide it. We'll see. We'll see. We're just talking. We're spitting out some ideas and I will see you guys back here very soon. If you have any topics you'd like me to cover again, I always take your requests leave them in the comments below or in my community tab on YouTube. And I will speak to you guys very soon. Take care. Bye.